This is the Todd Shapiro Show on Canada Talks, Sirius XM 167. Hello, Lance Lambert. What is happening, Todd? How's it going? Bovidainc.com, two-way humidity control packs, keeping your flower fresh. The global leaders in two-way humidity control. I'm good, man. You know, I like, like... like, you know what I mean, Lance. Like, life is perceptually always good on everyone's social, and there's always little hidden things behind that are stressing people out. So I got my stresses, uh, you know, uh, oh, and these things happen. But I'm I'm happy, you know. I make the most of life because uh, I I know where uh, I know where the, I know where the truth lies, and the truth lies in my happiness yeah. with my family. There you go, man. That's, yeah. uh, that's just another thing we have in common, isn't it? <laughs> You know, always see it through and always think of the positive. That's the way to go. Um, so uh, tell me, how are things uh, over at Bovidink.com? I know you had your big meetings in, in Minneapolis last week. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we had our quarterly meetings. Uh, always catch up and uh, look forward to the next quarter. And as we get closer, looking into uh, the 2020 uh, calendar year, which, you know, every year just keeps getting uh, busier and busier in this industry, you know, so it's a good thing. Um, definitely came out of it with some some great follow ups. So uh, now back at the home office, at least for a minute, do have to run out to uh, to Vegas for a few meetings tomorrow, but uh, pretty close to home for the, the next quarter. So I'm looking forward to being able to call you from a stable, uh, <laughs> relatively close time zone <laughs> to where you guys are at. Oh, man, that's good to hear. And uh, I see here because we're, we're approaching a big day in a couple of days here in Canada. Yeah. Uh, really big day. It's the year anniversary to when cannabis uh, became legal. And uh, apparently, you know, you wouldn't necessarily know this by the stock market, although there was a bit of a bounce today in the positives for a lot of these cannabis companies. But uh, legalization's going out on a high. It is. You know, this is something we always talk about it. I always bring it up. I'm a huge fan. Love how Canada was the first G7, the first first world country to legalize adult use cannabis. Uh, so I always point out this anniversary. That and the fact that uh, the anniversary does mark uh, the launching of certain concentrates in several provinces across Canada as well. But yeah, the anniversary is just two days away. It's on October 17th. I think it's been uh, both of us safe to say uh, it's been a crazy and fast moving year. I still I can't can't quite believe that a year has gone by already since we were talking about this and kind of building all of it up. Uh, but with this first anniversary, a little bit of reflecting and looking back, uh, one of the, the crazy quotes, I shared a story with you from The Star, uh, which is up there, obviously, in your neck of the woods. And uh, one of the first thing they say is talking about the advice given of start low and go slow. I thought that was neat because you and I always discuss that. We, we talk about, you know, don't drive high, but we also talk about just in general when it comes to cannabis to start low and go slow. So it's nice to see that they touched on that. Um, also, just, you know, some of the challenges, uh, it was a little slow uh, on many levels, you know, to getting inventory out there. Um, obviously, that was a major issue in the beginning was just the supply and demand and kind of balancing out the market in that respect. Um, but again, some of the challenges was shutting down uh, what I guess we call the gray market dispensaries and making sure to get out the license for the legal dispensaries. Now, that was another thing. Even delivery times, unfortunately, were kind of lagging. But, you know, these are all challenges of, of launching such a vast program across such a large area of land, I might add, uh, you know, to bring that normalization. It's, it's kind of a challenge, and we knew there would be some hiccups in that first year. What were, you know, some of the, in, in, in your opinion or what you've read or even from that article alone, what, what were sort of the, the biggest, what was the biggest challenge in this uh, close to a year anniversary uh, since it's been legal, uh, you know, federal, fe- federally uh, within our country? You know, I think one of the big things that we heard the most vocal from, and to your point, not just in articles, but also on social media, because that is really ear to the tracks on what the consumer and end users imp- uh, kind of impression is of anything, and um, the quality. That's one thing that kept coming up is just individuals that were familiar with quality, rather be from the medical industry, uh, or the, the, I should say the medical legal industry, or the um, black market, but um, just some people that I think uh, they had their expectations a little bit higher as this did, pardon the pun, as this did become a normalization in the country. Uh, so this is something that 
uh, hearing that from the front side and, and also talking to LPs on the supply side. They, they recognize these licensed producers know uh, there are some challenges around the rules and regulations to stay consistent with quality while still meeting standards. Uh, so that's something that's been worked through. But again, I think both sides are understanding that it was a work in progress. It's, it's tough to come straight out of the gate and, and have that perfect product, have that perfect delivery and accessibility. Um, this this kind of got pushed through. You know, Trudeau, he, he committed to it uh, when he was going out for his position. Uh, it's something that the I, I think the masses, that the public was holding him accountable to, even though uh, certain people in the government were trying to uh, push it off or trying to hold back on it. So I think the fact is like, nope, we got to do this. We got to get this debt done now. My hard, fast date is it's going to launch in October. Uh, that really put some things under the gun. So again, there was a little bit of learn as we go. And and that's what we saw in, in a big sacrifice, I think, again, was a bit of the quality that came out of it. And, and what about, uh, what would you say is the most uh, positive? I'd say the most positive, and I love how you touch on this, Todd, because you're familiar with the industry very much so more than, than many, is that the safety and that you know where your flower is coming from. You know that um, this is coming from a licensed producer that has several millions of dollars on the line to make sure that he follows the rules and regulations set forth by Health Canada. And you know that it's not made in somebody's basement. They're not using illicit or illegal um, pesticides, herbicides, uh, growth inhibitors. I mean, there's so many things that you can do to this plant that will make it a negative outcome. And that goes back to the just the, the pure basis of the plant. It's part of the phytoremediation class, which means that it sucks up everything that you deliver to it. So if, if you plant it where there's um, oil deposits, if you plant it where there's um, toxins, if you plant it where there's biohazard or radioactive substances in the ground, it is going to wick that up into the plant. And so it is imperative that you make sure that it's it's that top quality and it's above board. So I think that's the biggest win is people know where it's coming from and they know they can trust the source. Uh, we got a quick call here, uh, Lance. Uh, we got uh, John from Michigan on the line who wants to touch about, uh, I think, talking about oh, cannabis nice. in Canada. Hey, John. Hey, Todd. Hey, Lance. Hey, John. Glad you're on. Uh, Lance, I've actually had an idea for quite a while, and it deals with the other side of uh, your business. Um and I, if, if Bilal could actually uh, Bilal could put you in touch with me, that would be awesome. I actually have a very good sales idea for you. But uh, I wanted to just relate something to you. Todd knows where I'm working. Uh, working in the largest building and hotel in Detroit. And uh, we are on the top floors. And in the uh, past few weeks, about once a week, somebody on the hotel in the lower floors uh, has a tendency to go into the stairwell and uh, possibly, you know, enjoy their uh, medical marijuana. And it filters <laughs> up the stairway like a chimney. And I just oh, yeah. want to tell you that the mood at our job site gets a lot happier after that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, all, that's interesting. To... <laughs> yeah, we are on we are on a very tight deadline, and everybody's under the gun. But that has happened about once a week over the past three weeks, and it changes the entire atmosphere of the place. Oh my gosh, that is so interesting to hear that feedback. And I'm assuming everyone in your workplace is is 21 or over at least. <laughs> everyone is 21 or over oh, on the old drug test. But yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's quite interesting. Yeah, we're all yeah. for random drug test. It's just been very interesting. And I've often don't, I don't, often don't. thought if I had a bulb in a pack, I could run down the stairs, find out which one they're on, and give it to them. <laughs> we'll, we'll send you the sample kit. Man, that is too cool. And I'm glad to hear that you don't operate heavy machinery like a forklift or, or you know, a bulldozer at work. That's another thing that's oh, yeah. good to hear. That, absolutely. <laughs> it's, so. been, it's been an absolute hoot up there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And it, it, I think it's great for you to take that angle, man, because some people have such interesting opinions. So for you to, to make kind of light, I mean, that's it. Times are changing, you know. I mean, this is a perfect example yeah. of it. So I appreciate hearing that, John. <laughs> well, and, and absolutely. And I kind of narrowed it down, not that uh, not that I'm a, a connoisseur, but my neighbor does medical. So, I, yeah, I am around it. And uh, 
I think you can tell when it's somebody who has medical grade or if it's somebody just from the hotel who bought a loose joint just because of the smell of it. (laughs) (laughs) How interesting, man. Well, what a story. And I think this is a good example yeah, and this is this is it's been a, a as they say in Colorado a social experiment, right? But I mean that's applicable everywhere, even to your point in in Michigan in Detroit, where um, things are obviously moving forward. To your point with medical existing there, um, but people do need to be tolerant and, and understand that you know maybe isn't the best place for them to consume. But again, glad to hear you're not irate about it. Oh no, not at all, not at all. It, uh, it's actually like. John, are you high right now? Are you high right now, John? <laughs> I think I think you. If I only, if I only could, Todd. <laughs> I think you're lit. Okay, John, I gotta, I gotta ask Lance a couple more questions, but I'll we'll we'll, we'll get a lot to put you guys in touch. You got it. Thank yeah. you guys. Glad you're back, Todd. Thanks, Thanks, bro. For the message. Oh, no, of course, man. Of course. Yeah. Just don't forget my finders. Me. Um, okay, so uh, moving on <laughs> from Canada, <laughs> moving on from Canada, <laughs> Lance, to uh, to Australia. Uh, the government has been uh, announced that they're going to be investing three million dollars for medical cannabis studies. So they're they're really progressing over there. Yeah, they are. They are. We are a little worried because uh, while they did launch a medical program, it was approved back in March of 2017. I think we talked about it back then. Uh, You know, right now they've got about 11,000 registered medical cannabis patients. That's not a large number based on the overall populace being the country's about 24, 25 million. But at least they have begun moving forward. This came in light of, I think this is kind of interesting because we were just talking, I believe it was last last week, about um, how the um, Australian Capital Territory announced uh, that they were going to permit adult use consumption and growing as of uh, the end of January 2020. So in light of that, all of a sudden the Australian government came forward and said, okay, we, we, we want to get involved. We want to do more studies, more, more homegrown studies, uh, as opposed to studies from abroad. And that's exactly what they're doing. So um, it is... It is great to see, you know, there's 78 total licenses in Australia is one thing that the report was saying, but also, um, you know, was crediting some of the individuals for helping with this movement, like Olivia Newton-John, who just spoke at the Cannabis Science Conference up in Portland, Oregon uh, last month. Uh, You know, she's 71 years of age, like myself. She's been through cancer now three times that woman, I mean, I was a huge fan of hers when I was a, when I was a child, but even more so now. She's been through cancer three times since 1992, and she's one of the biggest advocates um, that's been supporting the movement in Australia. But for them, again, to come forth and say, we'll, we'll pitch up $3 million. Um, and this is actually coming from, uh, you, you know, an existing fund. So uh, it's not like they're having to source it out from the industry or from uh, the private sector. This is something that um, they're going to do through, uh, you know, this existing program and just find out, you know, what the big thing is about it and, and how it can really impact their, you know, their population. So good stuff coming out of Australia. Yeah, they'll have to have a grease line of uh, cannabis one day. Yeah. <laughs> well, and depending on what this federal medical research future fund, you know, has to offer, I don't think it will stop just the three. I think they're going to start looking at it from several different angles, too. So um, so we'll see what comes, you know. Well, remind me the population of Australia again or approximately. Uh, they're just under 25 million. I remember the last time I looked up, and uh, interesting fact, they're almost one for one with kangaroos. Not even making a joke. Hey! Approximately the-, the same amount of <laughs> kangaroos in that country as there are Australians. But joking aside, you know, it is a Commonwealth country. They're a, they're a cousin to Canada, and uh, they have been paying attention. Thankfully, they've been paying attention to what you guys are doing. Um, I know there's been several prime ministers that have toured Canada from other Commonwealth countries and the EU, looking to see what you you guys are doing what's working what what isn't but also more so what is working and they're taking it back home and, and this is a good example of that so you know excellent to hear and uh yeah i mean there's just so much progression uh we're hearing uh, country after country you know we've been doing this for so many years now and uh it, it's it, it's still early and, and uh, you know like here's another stat uh 200 000 medical marijuana patients are now licensed in oklahoma like we're oklahoma Oklahoma, yeah. Oklahoma, man. It's kind of the gateway to the south. Some might dispute, but Oklahoma 
it's kind of right there in the border of, of being considered a southern state and uh, being just north of, of Texas, specifically Dallas, is, is miles from their border. So it is interesting with Oklahoma, though. Oklahoma has a population just under 4 million people. So, again, if you compare, uh, say, the, the approximate 25 million with what, what did we say, about 11,000 patients in Australia, or even comparing um, Arizona and some other medical states, for them to – a lot of people 200,000 yeah man and this is something that just to point out th- this just occurred recently because on June 26 of 2018 is when 57 percent of the Oklahoma voters approved state question 788 which was legislation essentially that legalized marijuana for any medical use on a doctor's recommendation but yeah after October 1st as of this month 200,000 patients and they didn't think it was going to be nearly that much they really thought that maybe it'd be I don't know, an estimate was about 2% of overall populace, so about 80,000 people. So for them to come in that quickly, and it, it just gives an example that, um, again, this is a market where they were primed for it. Uh, it's been very, very well received. Uh, my team has gone down there, but I've had several friends in the industry have gone down to two conventions, one uh, in early summer. The other one was just a few weeks ago, and it's been all positive. They said that the market is, is ripe for it. Uh, there's a lot of money invested into it, and they want to make sure it's successful. So another success story for the medical side. Lance Lambert, uh, bovidainc.com. Again, two-way humidity control packs, keeping the flower fresh. Uh, they don't, uh, they don't, they don't, they don't produce the product. They just keep that product uh, very safe. In Oklahoma, where do they produce the product? Do you know? Yeah, so um, it's an interesting model. They actually have what I call a limitless license scenario. So this is similar to Oregon, and that's a great question, Todd, because this is kind of a touchy. You know, they're it's okay for you to do limitless, but um, with extreme capitalism, that really forces it into only the cream rises to the top, right? So only the strongest survive. So there have been several, several licenses that already been issued. There's several more that are coming, uh, several hundred actually, I should say. Um, so it's produced everything from small scale to large scale, almost comparable to, to licensed producer type size, uh, like you see up in Canada. Uh, but again, with that limitless license, uh, lessons learned from from the past. Oregon did this, and Oregon got into a, an interesting predicament where supply far outweighed demand, and they're still trying to recover from that. You can still get top shelf cannabis for a dollar a gram wholesale, or even retail as low as two or three dollars a gram. When the average is about eight to ten dollars a gram in most legal markets, that gives you an idea of just how tough times are. Um, and again, it just forces you know, the, the more successful to survive. But some argue if that's the most advantageous way to go versus having a limit license program. Uh, and and uh, it, it's just so weird, all the different laws between all the different states. And, the, you know, what, what, what I found even more peculiar, Lance, is the fact that you know this stuff. Like, you know, state by state by state. Is that... I mean, I guess, is that a big part of your job? Because uh, ultimately, the more the laws loosen in each state, the more you'll target Bovida to go in those uh, states? Yeah, that's spot on. So we want to be there to support the industry. And um, again, we do reference this division as herbal because we look at medical first. We're very much supportive of it from a medical aspect, but we do value and appreciate the adult use as well. Uh, But that has become a major role for me in my position and even so much so that my title kind of shifted a little bit. So um, as of Uh, This quarter, I've shifted to being the director of herbal business development. So a lot of what I was doing was focused on just that, making sure we had the stats available uh, for our internal teams to make those right decisions from a business standpoint, whether it be sales or marketing or operations and logistics. So sharing where things are at domestically, internationally, um, just trying to to keep a close eye. It's a little bit of tea leaves and tarot cards, I won't lie. You know, it's, it's knowing what we've seen over the past several years in order to give a good idea of what certain markets will turn into over the next several years. Uh, but it's become more of a focus for me. And that's one thing the team always compliments me on. They're like, we don't know how you can retain all this information just off the top of your head, but um, I've turned it into an art. <laughs> no, I mean, listen, it's it's not an art. It's you being very knowledgeable and, and working very hard. I always say work ethic in any industry or any uh, company is uh, the key to rising success. And it's great conversation when you know a lot of things to reference uh, without having to Google them. I simply admire that uh, ability. I really 
do. I'm not saying that uh, yeah. uh, facetiously at all. My my last question here for you, Lance Lambert from Bovidink.com. Did you see, and I, and I just saw this yesterday or the day before, uh, so if you're not schooled on this one, but I'm sure you are, uh, that uh, Governor Cuomo out of New York was talking about maybe doing some different initiative to get neighboring governors from Connecticut and Jersey to kind of work yeah. on, a, on, a, on a consistent cannabis regulation for the three states. And I thought... That's yes. that was a neat that's a neat angle. Yeah, I really think it is too. That did that did come across uh my purview about a week ago and I heard that they were working on this. And what better opportunity to move things forward, right? Because it's been a challenge specifically for New York and New Jersey. Uh New York's been having a bit of troubles getting out of its own way. Now it's it's heavy heavily enthralled in politics there, respectfully so. But same with New Jersey. You know, the the governor had really good intentions, just like Cuomo, had really good intentions of getting things moved forward, not having to take it to the public for vote because he already knew that there was a majority favor from census. And um he's been having some challenges. So for, for them to get together and kind of create this trifecta of movement. And it makes sense. I mean, I... It I really makes... Well, to me, what makes but, most sense yeah. about it, if these three big states can pull that off, uh, New York being yeah. one of them, uh, maybe these are the grounds for a federally, you know, consistently legal platform as well, much like we've done here in Canada, although they differ a little bit province to province, but, you know, you get the framework done, and I think that was an important step. Yeah, I agree 100 percent. That's what brings the federal regulation. You know, you get FDA involved at a federal level, USDA involved at a federal level, and it just keeps that much more consistency, which equals quality. So I, I'm fully in support, and I hope that's what gets us closer to the state that Canada is in at some point as far as legalization goes. Awesome, dude. Well, Lance, uh, the team here at the Shapiro Show is very excited to be going down to Vegas to uh, be a part of Bovid yes. booth at MJ Biz December 11th through the 13th. Uh, broadcasting live there. And uh, in the intern, we'll catch up uh, next week. But I know uh, you're probably wishing us a very happy one-year anniversary in a couple days from now. Maybe we'll do a two-, three-minute chat with you uh, that day just so we can hear uh, right from someone who's been an advocate all along. That'd be phenomenal. I'd look forward to it. Thanks so much, Todd. Cheers, Lance. Lance Lambert. BovidaInc.com to a humidity control packs. This is the Todd Shapiro Show on Canada Talks, Sirius XM 167.